What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And if you thought last week's video was a massive drop of 2021 MacBook Pro, iMac and Mac Pro news, well, Mark Gurman and Bloomberg, they aren't even finished yet. And also, if you like my videos or you just like staring into my dreamy eyes, give me that thumbs up, subs up and hit that notification bell ding for more videos like this every week. All right. Let's get into it. And we've heard all the reports for a 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models, a new M1X or M2 processor, whatever they call it, an improved display, the return of MagSafe, the potential removal of the touch bar and even more ports. Well, it's going to get even better if you're a longtime user because German now reports Apple is planning to bring back the SD card slot for the next MacBook Pro. This is gonna allow us to pop in memory cards from digital cameras directly into them. A feature that was removed for no good reason back in 2016. And you know what I gotta say about that? You uh, might wanna take your headphones out for this. Boop. We don't need a dunko! German also says the touch bar will in fact be going away after earlier reports said that they were testing models without the touch bar. And then other claims throughout the idea that we could even see other ports like USB-A and HDMI return, which Feels like a bigger reach to me since USB-C Thunderbolt or a dongle could handle a lot of that. Now, Apple is clearly listening to the loyalists like us. They gave us back the scissor switch keyboard, and now they're bringing back all the ports and everything that make the MacBook Pro great with even more power, better battery life while running cooler. Come on now, that's a rad Apple. Yeah! The 2021 16-inch MacBook Pro is the product that I'm most excited about for this year. So I'm just personally invested in this. And if you think about, you know, Apple's obsession of how their products kept on getting thinner and thinner, it was obviously directly related to Johnny Ives' obsession about making these things as thin as possible. We know that, look, it helped push the Apple aesthetic like no other has, but then it also frustrated so many pros because it took away so much functionality. To me, it really feels like the return of the Mac. Whoa, whoa, what was that? I mean, that was weird. Hmm. But there's still more to talk about. This time it's the MacBook Air. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says Apple is working on an even thinner and lighter version of the Air. And the plans are for it to be released sometime during the second half of this year at the earliest or in 2022. And they can absolutely make this thing thinner even if it's already thin enough to cut an Apple. But they can, that's thanks to the new M1 chip that also requires no fan in the current MacBook Air. And it will bring MagSafe as a standalone charging port, which is a big push for all of Apple's portables this year. And it will also rest next to the two USB-C ports. Now the screen size will remain 13 inches, but Apple has talked about making its size smaller by shrinking the border around the screen even juicier. The report says that Apple considered building a 15 inch version of this new MacBook Air, but then decided against it. And you know, that's probably because they realized they'd make a bigger chunk of money by having you jump up to the higher price 16 inch MacBook Pro if you want a larger screen. And I know, you know, that's just smart of them if they're purely looking out for their interest, but I would still love to see a 15 inch Air in this new reported design. Now we know 2021 is absolutely gonna be the year of the Mac. But we also talked about the completely new redesigned iMac that will have the biggest redesign out of all the Macs this year with slimmer bezels, the removal of the chin to look more like Apple's Pro Display XDR with a flat back as well. Now, people have wondered if Face ID will finally be incorporated into any of its Macs, and the iMac would seem to be like an easy candidate for it. But the Bloomberg report says Apple's Face ID was originally planned to make it into this year's iMac, but is now more likely to be featured in the second generation of the redesign and not the 2021 model. German also reports that Apple has developed Macs with the ability to connect to the internet via a cellular connection. Now we've seen plenty of these patents for this over the years, but that feature is also not expected to arrive in 2021. And with the current pandemic, with many of us still at home, I don't think it's a must have. Plus, you know, if you're on a data plan that supports it, you can already use your iPhone as a hotspot to connect a Mac to it. It's just not as crucial and it would require you to set up another data plan specifically for that Mac, similar to how an iPad with LTE gets connected. So it's not something that we really need, but would be a nice add-on for some users eventually. Because believe it or not, there are MacBook Pro owners that don't use an iPhone. I know, sounds crazy, huh? 
Now, if you're excited about Apple's rumored Apple glasses, you might want to uh, lower those expectations some. According to Bloomberg, who has provided us with so much content to talk about over the past two weeks, and big props to Mark Gurman's reporting, Apple's first AR VR headset will be a mostly virtual reality device that will include a 3D digital environment for gaming, watching videos, and communicating according to the report. Now, AR functionality will be more limited, so it sounds like VR is really more the focus here, and Apple plans to launch it as soon as 2022. Now, the product, though, will be more of a high-end niche product that is aimed to get developers on board for more mainstream products like AR glasses down the line. Now, how niche, you ask? Well, the report says it's expected to be far more expensive than rivals like Oculus's Quest 2, PlayStation VR, or HTC's, which are around $300 to $1,000. And those are products that have an abundance of content and ecosystems with games and experiences and just plenty of software support. Well, Apple internally has conservative sales expectations and insiders believe they might sell maybe one headset per day per retail store. So there are 500 retail stores out right now, which would then more align them with a product that has sales like the Mac Pro that starts at $5,999. I'm not saying the headset will, but it's not gonna be a price that everyone will just wanna scoop up. So we're talking about really a niche developer edition headset from Apple in 2022. And I know that Apple is really good at what it does and I will never count them out, but you've seen the progress and advancements of a lot of these companies that are competitors and what they've done. Well, if Apple is basically making their first developer headset for 2022, and then, you know, we've seen concepts like Lenovo's Think Reality A3 that was shown off at CES 2021 for Enterprise. And then the big leap in hardware from Qualcomm's XR2 platform that's going to just significantly improve every headset out there with their next versions. It's just going to be interesting to see how Apple competes, but they won't be competing in 2022. We're talking about more like 2023 or even 2024. And if they have a finished consumer product by then, what will they be up against at that point? Because we know Apple always has the power of the ecosystem, but a VR ecosystem, that's totally different. And that ecosystem, it hasn't made a significant change or impact for something like their HomePod business, even with the HomePod mini. Now we've all heard the reports and the stories about this idea of an Apple car. Well, you know, that's still down the, uh, the road, at least three to five years away. It could be even longer. And Tesla and other manufacturers, they'll be so much more advanced by then. So I'm always curious about what Apple will be doing outside of their core products because none of these are guaranteed home runs, but you know, like all of us will be watching what they do. All right, that's going to do it for this video. You know, you can always like and subscribe if you haven't done that already, but you can also check out more if you want to get really dig deep inside the Apple Bits XL is my audio podcast where we break it all down with these stories and more every week. And then all my content is independent. You can support my videos and my podcast at patreon.com slash Brian Tong. You get benefits, early access to it, and a completely ad-free version of the podcast. So thanks so much for watching and supporting. I'll see you soon. Take care and be safe. Peace and love.